probably one of the most common questions that I get is, what is your ideology? I usually give pretty vague answers to this question, or at least I used to. I might have said, I'm a socialist, or I'm a communist. But whenever I'd say that, the person would ask me, okay, but what specific branch of socialism or communism? And okay, fine, that's an understandable thing to ask. So I say, Marxist. And then I get the question, what kind of Marxist? And I always slightly wince at that question. What kind of Marxist? Am I a philosophical Marxist, a political Marxist, a Marxian economist, a post-Marxist Keynesian, a Kantian Marxist, a Hegelian Marxist? None of these answers are ever interesting to the person asking, what kind of Marxist are you? The answer they expect is something like, I'm a Marxist-Leninist, or I'm a Luxembourgist, or a Trotskyist, or a Maoist, or whatever. The issue I have with this question is that it's hardly ever about ideology, but so often about history. When someone asks me, are you a Marxist-Leninist, they aren't asking, what are your thoughts on vanguardism and democratic centralism? They are asking, what do you think of Lenin, the Bolshevik Revolution, and the Soviet Union? Now, I don't really make videos about history. I like history, but I don't really like politicizing history or dogmatically adhering to a historical political system, or for that matter, basing my entire political ideology on the rejection of a historical political system. I also kind of disagree with the premise of the question, which brand of Marxist am I? It shouldn't be a question that even exists. Marxism isn't a political ideology in and of itself. It's a method of analysis. It's like a tool in sociological science used to find material truth. You wouldn't ask which brand of astrophysicist are you? Are you a post-Kantian neo-astrophysicist or a cyber-Aristotelian astrophysicist? I just realized I can't really say the word astrophysicist, but we're just going to power through. Ideally, there should only be Marxism. If utilized correctly, Marxism is a tool that should always reach the same conclusions given the same material conditions. The differences between Leninism and Maoism aren't a difference in Marxist theory, but a difference in material conditions. Lenin himself said that Leninism was Marxism applied to the material conditions of Russia. And Mao said that his ideas, Mao Zedong thought, are Marxism applied to the material conditions of China. So to ask me, a Swedish person, if I am a Leninist, should be a nonsense question. Sweden is a vastly different country from Russia, with a different political climate and different material conditions in regards to size, administration, natural resources, basically everything. Am I a Leninist? Of course I am not a Leninist, since Lenin himself said Leninism is Marxism applied to Russia. I am a Marxist who lives in Sweden. I advocate for Marxism applied to Sweden. If you ask me, what do you think about Lenin's ideas? I can tell you that I respect Lenin as a person and as a revolutionary, but I don't believe that his ideas of vanguardism, democratic centralism, or the system of Soviet democracy would be entirely practical if applied to the material conditions of Sweden. And nor should they be, as they were meant for Russia. You can actually argue that the reason Leninism failed in Eastern Europe, the reason countries started westernizing, liberalizing, breaking away in the 80s, early 90s, is because the Soviet Union essentially forced Leninism, Russian Marxism, onto countries that, get this, were not Russia and had different material conditions from Russia. Sure, there were slight variations in ideology from country to country. Hungary had something akin to a socialist market reform-ish ideology. East Germany had a multi-party parliamentary democracy-ish Romania had a weird kind of nationalism. But they still had to adhere to Marxism-Leninism and essentially copy the political system of their big brother, the USSR. Did Leninism work well in Russia? 
maybe it did, maybe it was corrupted by Stalin, maybe by Khrushchev, maybe by some other guy, but regardless, it was meant for Russia. If we again use astrophysics as an analogy, you wouldn't observe the material conditions of, say, Mars, which, because of it being close to the habitable zone in our solar system, is colonizable. But then you impose that conclusion that Mars is colonizable on another planet like Mercury, which has entirely different material conditions, and thus is not actually colonizable. Oh, but the great ideology of degrassism Tysonism says that colonizing a planet is a great solution which solves many problems, and so it must be applicable everywhere. Well, it isn't. Now, the Marxist-Leninists in the audience are probably saying, well, Marxism-Leninism is just as adaptable as Marxism. Now, A, I disagree. From a historical perspective, Marxism-Leninism has looked very similar no matter the country it's applied in. And B, even if it was as adaptable, what then would separate Leninism from Marxism if the vanguard theory can be done away with in the name of adaptability than what remains of the, quote, Leninist ideology? I have a different disagreement with the question, what ideology do you adhere to? Specifically when someone wants me to say something like, I like this philosopher, I like this person, I like Rosa Luxemburg, I like Lenin, I like Mao, whatever. Which ideology are you? Which box do you fit into? In my opinion, that kind of stifles ideological development when you're forced into one single, quite a restrained box, where if you don't agree with every single point of left communism or Maoism, then all of a sudden you don't know where you belong, and so maybe you try to force yourself to believe in something that you otherwise wouldn't, just so that you would fit in and check all the boxes of this one ideology so that you can say proudly that I am a third world Maoist with Brazilian characteristics. And additionally, when I say this is my ideology, firstly, people who watch my videos who do not follow that specific ideology will either reject me for not being of their ideology or they will try to convert me. And I'm not saying this to call out anyone or cancel anyone or whatever, but there have been people who are Marxist-Leninists who, upon hearing me saying that I am not a Leninist, and even saying that I am no longer a Leninist, that I used to be one but I no longer am, they try to convert me back into Leninism. They try to ask, oh, well, what were your problems with it? And then when I say, oh, um, various different problems that I had, like the bureaucratization that arose to administer the oversized country that was Soviet Russia, or the democratic centralism, or vanguardism, or whatever, you know, whatever it is that I say, they will start arguing with me, debating with me, trying to win me over, which I don't like. I mean, yes, fine. Discussion and debates are important. You know, it's important to take in ideas from different perspectives and improve yourself and improve your understanding of politics and ideology. But that's not what I assume I'm getting into when I'm asked a simple question. What ideology are you? Why are you no longer this ideology? I would initially assume I answer the question I perhaps say, oh, this is why I'm not this ideology anymore. And then the conversation kind of ends there. But no, these people want to keep going and keep telling me, well, you know, you could always, or Leninism also means that you could, and you could say that you're a Leninist, and, and, and that kind of thing, which I get tired of, which discourages me from ever saying what my ideology is because I just don't want to have those kinds of discussions whenever I happen to say I am an orthodox Marxist. The ideas that I put forward in my videos are not, strictly speaking, orthodox Marxist ideas. They are my own ideas, which are based on the things that I have read from all across the political spectrum. Just because I am an orthodox Marxist does not mean that I am a representative of that ideology in whatever it is that I do. And if I were to say this channel, Asher Scapegoat, is an orthodox Marxist channel, then all of a sudden, if I say something which is not orthodox <laughs> to, the, uh, Mar to orthodox Marxism, 
then other Orthodox Marxists will say, hey, you're misrepresenting the common ideology we all share. That's my rant. Thank you for listening to this, if you did. And thank you to my patrons Inga, Leonora, Dalem, Shrijith, Jedi Davian, Michael Rook, Mellow Mel, John H. N. And thank you to my cooler patrons, Nian Chang Min and M. Lim. And of course, the even cooler patrons, the big boy patrons, Michael Compton, as koala as possible, Joe Manchukuo, and Joshua Cheeseman. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Shall we still be slaves and work for wages? It is outrageous, has been for ages. Oh, this earth by right belongs to toilers and not to spoilers of liberty. The master class is small, but they have lots of gall. When we unite to gain our right, if they resist, we'll use our might. There is no middle ground. This fight must be one round to victory for liberty. Our class is marching on. Shall we still be slaves and work for wages?